We've just seen the press conference of the prosecution panel on day 8 of the impeachment trial of Chief Justice Renato Corona. Chief Prosecutor Neil Tupa said that his team is very confident that even on Article 2 alone, they will be able to convict the Chief Justice. So how do we make sense of day 8? Joining us to help us is Rappler Editor-at-Large, Marites Vito. So, ma'am, good afternoon. Um, we actually had a lot of revelations today with regard to the properties of the Coronas. What to you was most significant? For me, it was the revelation, the discovery that it was actually Renato and Cristina Corona who owned the 200 square meter lot in Mackinley Hills in the fort. I, I was particularly struck by this because we wrote this in a story uh, way before the sale ends of the Chief Justice were released. And we said that the daughter, who was based in the U.S., was only turning 30 at the time, bought a 200 square meter lot in Mackinley for 6.1 million. But the going rate at the time was 8 million. And then the Chief Justice said in a speech in the Supreme Court that my, he said, and I quote, uh, in Tagalog, he said, my daughter is a physical therapist. She's been living there for a long time. She can afford to buy the lot. So this afternoon, this all unraveled, and I was really surprised that they're the real owners of McKinley Hill lot. But the defense lawyers were pointing out that uh, the eventual owner was still Cherina Corona because the deed of sale um, had her name in it. And then there was a special power of attorney transferring um, the ownership of that property to Cherina. The question with the special power of attorney was that it was dated after Chief Justice and Mrs. Corona made the last payment on Mackinley Hill. So the SPA did not cover the payment of Mackinley Hill. It was just to sign the transfer of the deed of sale to her. So for all intents and purposes, the lot was paid for by her parents. And um, it's very obvious that they are the real owners. Okay, let's go to the Bellagio property. It actually came from the private prosecutor and not from Giovanni Nang of Mega World that there was this alleged discount that the Chief Justice availed himself of 40% to acquire Bellagio. What, how did you interpret like that revelation? According to Mr. Giovanni Nang, they give standard discounts of 15 percent right. and he said the maximum is 20 percent so that's double that's even double the maximum discount granting that there were uh, he said uh, finishing problems uh, that's still a huge discount I was wondering why Mega World was not categorical about the discount he just said that they just gave uh, they usually give 15 percent discount for cash buyers and that's just what he didn't want to elaborate, but uh, if we connect the dots ourselves as journalists, we could see that this discount was special at 40%. Even if there, he said that there were problems with the finishings, mm -hmm. but that's not very usual to give such a big discount. And yes, he was mentioning that 2008 was a year of the financial crisis also. Okay, so the prosecution actually pounced on that bit of information and they said that there was a pending case before the Supreme Court concerning Mega World. Could you enlighten us what exactly was this case and what was the participation of the Chief Justice? I remember we wrote that in 2004, uh, Mega World had a pending case in the Supreme Court and the decision was penned by Chief, by that time, Associate Justice Corona in favor of Mega World. Uh, it had to do with, uh, with broker's fees, and he said that Mega World is not liable, and they don't need to pay, I think, some millions of pesos in broker's fees. So he decided in their favor. That was in 2004, at the time that uh, he was buying uh, properties already. I think he started to pay for McKinley. If I'm, no, I'm sorry. He started to pay for McKinley in 2006, okay. and he paid for Bellagio in 2008. So this was way before way he before. paid for the properties. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the mode of payments. Um, the witnesses were saying that it was usually the payments were usually done via check and in several like what two to three payments for the properties. Like, what 
what do you think was the is there any significant information we can get out of how the coronas paid for their properties yes i think if we do a timeline or a chart we will see that they had heavy payments especially in 2009 i was just computing they paid for bellagio uh, and uh, i think mckinley they paid no i think they paid for bellagio twice in 2009 so that's about like 9 million pesos. In 2008, they paid 4 million for McKinley plus another payment. So every 2008 and 2009 were years of heavy payments for them. Mm -hmm. So my conclusion is they're, they're very liquid. They have lots of cash. Now the next thing we have to do is to check with their uh, sal ends how much a declared income, and we can go back to the ITR, Income Tax Revenue Records, disclosed by Commissioner Kim Henares. But then we can see that uh, it's quite difficult to explain how they were able to make all these payments. So let's zoom out of like today and the past weeks. How do all of these affect Article 2 and the case at hand now at the Senate because again the defense keeps repeating that ill-gotten wealth is already out of the question for them and what is being discussed now is the alleged failure to disclose the sale and, and to declare certain properties. Yes, I think uh, it's, it's really hard to conclude now that this is a result of ill-gotten wealth. For us, we, con we can say, we can conclude that it's unexplained wealth. Now we have to go to the next step and see where they got their sources of income. But I think uh, for, for the public, that's quite easy to understand that uh, it, it doesn't square with the in declared incomes of the coronas. So finally, the prosecution expects to finish Article 2 within the week. What do you think needs to be capped off? You mean needs to be... How, how do you think this article should be finished? What still needs to be brought out? Yeah, I think I saw in their list that they, were, they invited the land transportation commissioner because in one or two sal ends of Chief Justice Corona, he did not declare any vehicle. So I think that's part of, their, of the prosecution's um, plan is to present number of vehicles he owns and which are not declared apparently in his sal ends. So I think they've finished the bigger piece of the puzzle. So now they're going to the maybe lesser pieces of the puzzle. And I don't know if the defense will this week also present capability to pay okay. of the coronas. I don't know if that will come within the week or it will be after the, the prosecution rests its case. Okay, thank you, ma'am. We will see in the coming days for this week how these pieces um, go together if they or if they do at all. Thank you. Um, this is Rappler's coverage of the impeachment trial of Chief Justice Renato Corona. Join us again tomorrow for the ninth day of the trial.